सदाशिवसमारंभां शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव पादरायण सूत्रभाष्यु वंदे भगवत पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तिहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम ओं सहनावत सह नौ घन सह वीरवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमा वह ओं शांत शांत शांति धातु ब्रह्म संप्रोक्त जीव आख्यात मुच्यते प्रकृति खसुबंतादिर्धातुब्रह्मात्मने नम नारायण परो व्यक्ता दंडम व्यक्त संभव अंडस्यांत मे लोका सप्तद्वीपा चे दिनी आई थिंक लास्ट पाठा वी डिड दी फिफ्थ श्लोका ऑफ दी एट चैप्टर इट वॉज अंत काले चमेव स्मरण मुक्त कलेबरम यति सद्भाव याति नास्त्र संशय अस्मिन् विषय संशय नास्ति देर इज नो डाउट दैट एट दी टाइम ऑफ डेथ अंत काल समवन हु गिव्स ऑफ दी शरीर कलेबरम गिव्स ऑफ दी शरीर रिकॉलिंग मी सह मद्भाव याति प्रयाति प्रयाति सह मद्भाव याति ही अटेन्स माय स्टेटस ही बिकम्स वन विथ ईश्वरा दिस इज द आइडिया इन द फिफ्थ श्लोक न मद्विषय अयम कि दिस रूल दैट अ पर्सन हु फाइनली ब्रीथ हिज लास्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट मी सेज भगवान कृष्ण ही अटेन्स मद भाव माय भाव ही बिकम्स वन विथ मी और ही अटेन्स सेम स्टेट एज मी दिस इज अ फैक्ट दिस इज अ रूल विच इज नॉट ओनली रिलेटेड टू मी इट इज नॉट दैट आई एम द विषय ओनली देन ही मर्ज विथ मी एंड नॉट एप्लीकेबल एल्सवेर बट इट्स अ जनरल रूल यम यम सो किन तरी देन वॉट इज अ फैक्ट this rule that you mention how far does it apply what all is it applicable to yanyam vapi smaran bhavam tyajatyante kalevaram tantam eva kaunteya sada tad bhava bhavitah this rule is applicable through and through with any matter in in the sense at the time of death whatever a person thinks of he gets that kind of a gati so it is not that i am the vishaya only then he will attain something that vishaya yam yam va api smaran bhavam yam yam bhavam smaran yam yam va bhavam swaram smaran earlier bhagwan gave an example that a person who leaves the body thinking of me recalling me and here not only me any bhava anyone who thinks of anything at a, at a particular point which is that the last bre- breath of life on the death bed basically on the death bed when there is prayana kala leaving the sharira then whatever bhava one is in whatever one hold on to holds on to that is the journey that gives his gati thereby ante ante sorry ante i should have made it in the second line here so ante अंते यम यम वा अपि भाव स्मरन कलेवरम त्यजति वन गिव्स ऑफ दी कलेवरम शरीर 
one gives up the sharira shariram tejati tam tam eva he kaunteya tam te tam eva he kaunteya Tantam eva sadabhav sadbhav bhavitaha san eti tantan bhavam eti tamtam eva sadha tadbhav bhavita san tamtam eva hekaunte sadha tadbhavita san tamtam eva bhavam eti so that is the anvaya there one attains that very bhava whatever bhava a person holds on to at the time of death that alone he attains yasmat evam yasmat evam antya bhavana dehantara praptau karanam since this is the rule this niyama is applicable all the way across all vishayas therefore a person who thinks that at the point of death i will have i will have this thought in my mind you plan your entire life thinking that at the end the end moment i will think about bhagwan but to think about bhagwan you need a to think about anything if you plan something generally see there are two ways to death one is the gradual the natural process of aging the body goes through diseases jara vyadhi then the mind weakens all the sense organs weaken then the mind weakens the buddhi is not active slowly one starts withdrawing from the sharira just like a child the child sleeps a long duration then as the child becomes younger and younger starts gaining more and more energy to be awake but towards the end as a person grows old the body starts to weaken the strength goes away one cannot stay awake for a long time starts falling asleep sleeps through the day very little time a person is awake diseases take away the body the strength of the mind also goes away slowly all the indriyas are not functioning digestive system fails prana has weakened all this is the journey towards the end thereby the planning that a person has made saying that i am planning for that last moment i will hold on to this tattva or you know upasana of ishvara my ishta devata at the end moment so that i can merge with that deity i become one with that i am a bhakta i want to become one with shri krishna or shiva or whoever it is but you cannot plan for the end moment in this natural process of death the mind would have weakened the buddhi cannot control the mind the mind runs havoc it will go wherever it wants generally there is shoka why did i not do punya why did i do papa all these moments are recollected across the life whatever one person has done good or bad all these start a person start the person starts recalling and the mind runs through that you cannot control it it is very difficult unless the person has trained it through and through the entire life therefore person who sada tad bhav bhavita san one who holds on to that tattva or that ishta devata whatever it is that bhava that person plans for he has to plan for not only plan but execute it all the time only when your mind as a resting place it goes back to that ishta devata only then it is possible that the last moment also the mind will rest in that tattva or that ishta devata you have to train it entire life all the moments whenever the mind is free it should not do what it likes to do but it should rest in this ishta devata only then at the end moment also the mind will have nothing to do but being trained it it will resolve and stay in that ishta devata thereby will it will become one with that deity
the second way to die is accidental you don't know what happened accidental it can be due to an accident or it can be sudden sudden death maybe due to an accident maybe due to an attack maybe uh, some sudden uh, uh, disease where you don't even know you had and a person a person does not know that he had that kind of a thing and suddenly that person dies away a heart attack or whatever a stroke sun stroke where you cannot plan the person cannot plan and once since he cannot plan there is no way that the mind knows what to hold on to it is not trained anymore it cannot jump also whatever is happening in the active life at that last moment whatever thought was there it does not even get the moment to recall the past and hold on to whatever it likes so we don't know what happens then this gati is very difficult to understand karmana gati hi is very very difficult to know so some kind of an understanding is there broad understanding through shastras that last moment whatever is there that will define the gati but what happens to a person who dies in an accident that's why there is lot of ritual involved to a person when a person dies in an accident to take care of his gati that jeeva's gati is very difficult to understand we do whatever we can so that the person gets good gati sudden death also same thing the mind has not planned for the future the sukshma sharira is not ready to go into another sharira because it has to choose from the earlier so many janmas the sanchita which has been accumulated it has to choose the prarabdha as per the vasanas and only when the it is a natural order of death when a person knows that i am dying the mind runs into some kind of a past it collects what it likes and then that defines the gati in sudden death there is very difficult to analyze as to what was the last thought thereby these are the two ways to die and whichever is the way to die whatever is the last bhava you cannot plan for it unless you have done it entire life train the mind and thereby tad bhava bhavita sada tad bhava bhavita san tad bhava is whatever bhava has smaran sada tad bhava bhavita san at the end moment sada on the death bed completely that, that's why you see that culturally when a person is dying then there is a lot of chanting going on around him including uh, great saints why because uh, even if the person is in uh, in a coma or in coming out of the sleep only momentarily still something will fall on the ears and then the mind will be drawn to that at least to that mantra that shloka that dt the shloka something will happen that nama swarana and thereby we try to get his mind focused on that dt on some punya karya and thereby we try to define the gati although we do not know we we assume that this is how the person will progress in another janma thereby sada tad bhav bhavita san tantam eva bhavam eti yasmat evam yasmat evam since this end moment antya bhavana dehantar prapto karanam this ending bhavana the ending moment bhavana is the reason is the cause for attainment of another deha that kind of a deha which will facilitate the bhoga of that particular taste which has come up at the end moment whatever desire has cropped up that i should have done this i should not have done this i would have i, I would like to do this i would like to follow this kind of a life if i if if i get an opportunity this is the kind of life i would live again whatever is the thought there or this is the dt you know this is my ishta devata i should have spent more time there whatever thought is there that defines the sharira next sharira that is how it will be hunting for that kind of a sharira to take birth into that kind of a womb the jiva will want to enter and take birth in that particular family in that particular sharira where these kind of bhogas are possible and ishwara makes it possible so that through that karuna let the person exhaust those kind of vasanas 
since that is the case, tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha mayar pita mano buddhir maame vaishyasya saushaya ha. Is there a question? Is there a question Chandrikama? Maybe it is by mistake, I do not know. So. Okay, so uh, <coughs> sorry. So Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu Mahavanusmara. Since the ending moment defines the future Gati and that ending moment is kind of probability of the ending moment which you want that kind of a moment taking place, the mind taking turn onto that kind of a Vishaya at the end moment is possible, a high probability of that is only when you have continuously worked on that worked on that vishaya, held on to that vishaya as dear throughout your life. Therefore, tasma sarveshu kaleshu, all the time, maam anusvara, anusmara. You recall me, hold on to me, says Bhagavan. You hold on to Ishwara. Whatever is your understanding of Ishwara, let that grow, that clarity grow, stay there. Whenever the mind is free, stay with the Ishtadevata, Stay with Ishwara, that Ishta Devata not being different from Ishwara. Then that Ishwara, who is that Ishwara? Karma Phala Data, Jagat Karta. Then more clarity, who is that? Then I am that Ishwara. Whatever level of depth is possible for you to hold on to, hold on to that continuously. Here it is though Saguna, it can be taken as Nirguna, as Upasana, but Saguna, Maam Anusmara, but since the context is, it is not that Mahamanusmara, that's all. You do your karma. So, Yudhya Cha, Yudhya Cha means Tavad Dharma Anusarina. Whatever is your Kshatriya Dharma, as per that, you do Yudhya, Yudhya also. Yudhya Cha. Because you are on the battlefield. We, we cannot forget that Arjuna is on the battlefield. And if he starts thinking about Krishna there without fighting, that is not going to bring bear fruit. He has to do his karma as well. Otherwise, he will accrue papa. Then that chitta shuddhi will not be there which will allow anusmarana of Bhagavan. For that anusmarana also to take place, chitta shuddhi has to be there. That chitta shuddhi is possible only through swashrama karma. That varnashrama karma for Arjuna is yuddha, which he himself has chosen by the way. In that Janma, he has chosen the Kshatriya Sharira because his earlier life, he died with that this thinking that I want to become a Kshatriya, I, I would like to be a Raja or whatever. See, that thought has defined that because you have to trace back. Antya Bhavana Dehantara Prapta Karanam. So, it is not only next Janma. If you think about the earlier Janma, that also the, the ending moment of the earlier Janma, Antya Bhavana, Antya Bhavana, Sri Linga, therefore Antya, in Samasa it will be Antya Bhavana. That Antya Bhavana has led to Arjuna's birth as Arjuna, as a Kshatriya in the Kuru family as Pandava. That is also due to the earlier Janma. So, having wanted this Kshatriya Sharira of Arjuna, if he gives up that, he has been blessed with that sharira, with all the valor, all the fame that he has been blessed with. That is only for him to act out his desires so that that kind of a body will help him attain that result. Therefore, the sharira has been given to him. Now, having taken that body, he cannot follow someone else's dharma. Dehrva yudhyacha. So, this is not an instruction, it is not vidhiling in the sense that you have to do it. It is, you have to do it, it is not an order. Vidhi, it is vidhi as per Shastra vidhi. You have, you are a karta, you are a bhokta, for bhoga you want had to do some karma 
through this sharira therefore you are you have been facilitated with the sharira with that sharira you have to act out whatever is befitting that sharira thereby anusmarana of bhagwan is possible only through chitta shuddhi that chitta shuddhi is possible through kshatriya dharma for uh, arjuna therefore yudhya cha and then mai arpitam mano buddhi mai arpitam manah and buddhi manascha buddhischa mana buddhi mano buddhi and mai arpit arpita arpitau uh, buddhi is three linga so mai arpite mano buddhi that is mai arpita mano buddhi asya arpite istanta nishta so mai arpite mano buddhi asya saha mai mai arpita mano buddhi san so being one who has offered his mind and intellect unto me mam eva eshasi at the end moment if you do that you will attain me definitely mam eva eshasi asamshesh eshasi you will definitely attain me this so tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yudhya cha mai arpita mano buddhi san you can add the san asamshaya asamshaya mai arpita mano buddhi san mam eva eshasi or asamshaya can go with uh, it's a little difficult to know why asamshaya it is not asamshayam i uh, just let me see if i can quickly find something here asamshaya how do i where do i put that for anvaya i think there is a part of it of asamshayam also so asamshayam if it is there then it is easy and where otherwise you have to make a separate sentence so if it is asamshayam then that become uh, that becomes uh, easy asamshayam to make it adverbial but if it is asamshayah then you have to just asamshayah you have to make asamshayah so samshaya nasti ityartha you have to make a separate sentence there तस्मा सर्वेशु कालेशु माम अनुस्मर युद्ध्य च देन सेकंड सेंटेंस है मई अर्पित मनोबुद्धि सन सो एक देश अनवेर मई सो मई अर्पित इज मई अर्पित मनोबुद्धि इट इज नॉट मद अर्पित यू वुड एक्सपेक्ट समासा वाइज विदाउट एक देश अनवेर मद अर्पित मनोबुद्धि बट हियर इट इज मई अर्पित मनोबुद्धि सन माम एव एशसि असंशय असंशय देयर इज नो डाउट so it's a separate sentence because it's in first case if it is asamshayam then asamshayam maam eva asamshayam eshya see it, it can become adverbial but asamshaya it, it can be a separate sentence there kincha so if you have asamshayam in your patha that that can come here maam eva asamshayam eshya see I'll just mark the doubtful cases. Maybe as Anusmara Yudhya Cha. This is Madhya Purusha. One question. I hope everything else is clear there. Asya Si is a again word. Latla Kara there. Kincha further. Abhyas Yoga Yukte Na Cheta Sananya Gami Na Paramam Purusha Divyam Yati Partha Nuchintayan. So Abhyas Yoga Yukte Na Cheta Sa. न्यूटर अभ्यास योग युक्त चेतसा चेत न्यूटर न अन्य गामिना चेतसा ओनली बाय चेतस द माइंड मन विच इज एंडोर्ड विथ युक्त विथ अभ्यास एंड योग अभ्यास एंड योग और अभ्यास इट्स इज योग हियर अभ्यास इट्स इज योग कैट अभ्यास योग युक्त मयि so uh, abhyasa sacha abhyasa yoga abhyasa and yoga it is a karma dharya abhyasa sacha abhyasa yoga what is that abhyasa 
अभ्यास योग युक्तेन मयि चित्त समर्पण विषय भूते एकस्मिन तुल्य प्रत्यावृति लक्षण विलक्षण प्रत्यांतरित अभ्यास अभ्यास इज दैट विच वेर दि मैंड ईज ऑफर्ड अंड टू दि लॉर्ड और द विषय फॉर दि मैंड इज द लॉर्ड एकस्मिन एकस्मिन विषय ओनली दैट इज द विषय तुल्य प्रत्यावृत्ति लक्षण एंड वॉट इज दैट वृत्ति देर वृत्ति इट इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय द वृत्ति विच वृत्ति इज जस्ट इज थॉट विच इज सिमिलर दिस इज देर इज अ सीरीज ऑफ सिमिलर थॉट्स विच आर रिलेटेड टू द लॉर्ड एंड विलक्षण प्रत्यांतरित these thoughts are not segmented by other thoughts it should be taila dharavat that is abhyasa and that abhyasa that repetition of that same vritti of bhagwan in the mind continuously without other vrittis that abhyasa itself is called as yoga and tena yuktam tatraiva vyaprutam the mind this yoga na chetaha tena so the mind remains there it remains only in bhagwan through that kind of a mind chetasa na anya gamina not anya na anya gamina is anya is anyatra na anya gamina is anyatra vishayantare gantum shilam asyeti na nasti iti na anya gami so uh, a little uh, we cannot take this as nanj it is some kind some other thing some other uh, uh, prefix as per vyakrana otherwise you can't make that kind of a samasa it's uh, not easy to see that so na, na anya gami you can say na anya gami as a na as separate or na anya gami put together there na anya gami na not through that mind which goes elsewhere which by habit goes elsewhere is anya gami mind this is na anya gami mind it is not habituated to going anywhere else because through abhyasa it has been trained through abhyasa yoga it has been trained and thereby anya gami abhyasa yuktena abhyasa yoga yuktena chetasa is opposed to anya gami na chetasa therefore anya gami na chetasa uh, the person is not using that as a tool chetaha but abhyasa yoga yukta cheta is being used as a tool as an instrument thereby what he parth paramam purusham anuchintayan kena abhyas yuktera chetasa paramam purusham anuchintayan anya gamina na anuchintayan anya gamina chetasa na anuchintayan so no can be separated there and said anya gamina anya gamina te chetasa na anuchintay or no anya gamina chetasa anuchintayan this paramam purusham divyam paramam purusham yati so paramam purusham this paramam divyam purusham has to can be reused here whatever object yam yam bhavam so anuchintayan paramam purusham divyam paramam purusham anuchintayan he partha tameva paramam purusham divyam paramam purusham yati so it is an object to anuchintayan this paramam purusham divyam these three words in samanadi karanam are objects to anuchintayan as well as yati so abhyas yukte na chetasa yati he partha anuchintayan is a karta of the sentence so he partha abhyas yugdena chetasa paramam purusham or chetasa param uh, abhyas yuga yuktena chetasa na tu on for contrast we'll add to na tu anya gamina chetasa चेतसा वी कैन यूज से वंस अभ्यास युग योग युक्त न तो अन्य गामिना चेतसा परम पुरुषम परम दिव्यम परम पुरुषम
अनुचिंतन सेम दिव्यम दिस इज डिफिकल्ट दिव्यम परम पुरुषम याति सुहे पार्थ अभ्यास योग युक्तेर न तो अन्य गामिना चेतसा दिव्यम परम पुरुषम अनुचिंतन दिव्यम परम पुरुषम याति सो कर्ता कैन बी सप्लाइड या कश्चित एनी वन हू डज दिस अनुचिंतन याति दिस अनुचिंतन इज ए कर्ता अनुचिंतन को पी याति किम विशिष्टम च पुरुष याति इति उच्यते हु इज दिस पुरुष यू टॉक अबाउट परम दिव्यम पुरुषम दिव्य इज हियर इन भाष्य हु इज दट दिव्य पुरुष परम मीन्स निरतिशय परम मीन्स द मोस्ट सुपीरियर हू के नॉट बी ट्रांसग्रेस देर इज नो वन सुपीरियर टू हिम पुरुषम पुरुषम पुरी शयनात और पुरी शेते इति और पूर्णात पुरुष We have seen multiple times. Divya means what? Divi Surya Mandal. Divi is in heaven. Heaven means in the sky. There Surya Mandal is the Hiranya Garbha. Hiranya Garbha is Aditya Surya Mandal, Antargata Devata, who is the who is Hiranya Garbha, who is Ishara with the Sukshma Upadi of all Jivas. That is Surya Mandal is Bhavam. One who is there, Surya Mandale Divi means Surya Mandale Bhavam. That is Divyam Yati Gachchati. And Anuchintayan. What is the meaning of Anuchintayan? Shastra Chare Upadesham Anudhyayan. Jai Chintane. Anuchintayan. Chintana is the meaning of the Dhatu. Chintane is the meaning. In the meaning of Chintana is the Dhatu Jai. And with Jai, with Lut Pratya, you will get Dhyana. So what is dhyana? Anuchintana. Anuchintana is dhyana. What is dhyana? Anuchintana. So whichever you understand, that is the meaning. If you understand anuchinta better, then that is what it is. If you understand dhyana better, then that is what it is. It is an upasana basically. Iti etata. That is the idea. And kim vishishtam cha purusham yati. This Bhagavan Bhashyakara said Surya Mandale Bhavam yati. Who is that? Even if you say Surya Mandale, who is there in Surya Mandala? I would like to know who is that? What is the Visheshana? What is the Vaishishtya of this Purusha? Kim Vishishtam Cha Purusha Yati Iti Ucchate? That question is being answered in the 9th Shloka. Kavim Puranam Manushasitaram Anuraniyansa Manusmaredhyaha Sarvasyadhataram Achintya Rupam Aditya Varnan Tamasaparastat So Kavim Puranam Anushasitaram Anuraniyansa अनुरणीयान सम और अनुरणीयान समनुस्मरे इसे शुड बी अनुरणीयान सम अनुस्मरेत यह अनुस्मरेत यह अनुस्मरेत सर्वस्य धातारम अचिंत्य रूपम आदित्य वर्णन तमसा परस्तात जस्ट लेट्स लुक एट दिस भाष्य वी लुक एट दी डिटेल्स लेटर सो कविम कवि वो इज अ कवि कवि इज क्रांतदर्शी कवि इज क्रांतदर्शी एंड इन सेकेंड की क्रांतदर्शिनम सर्वज्ञम मीनिंग वॉट क्रांतदर्शी इज वन हू नोज द फ्यूचर एंड फ्यूचर इज अज एन उपलक्षण कवि इज समन हू सीज बियॉन्ड वॉट रेग्युलर पीपल सी दे हैव what is called as not only pratyaksha but they have some what is yogi pratyaksha it is clear so therefore we say kavi is a praise it is not kavi as in just a poet the way we know many of us are not even interested in poetry but it is not that kavi kavi is krantadarshi one who sees beyond like veda vyasa veda vyasa is a kavi not this time pass poets who you know they did not say time pass but then these artists you know they were wanting to be artists not that kind of a poet krantadarshi who sees the future 
they see something which cannot be seen by others thereby also the, the poetry has that rasa which comes out which expresses something which is you know not even imaginable to others but here they have siddhis so kranta darshi sarvajna is the meaning and in the context that purusha is a kavi what kind of a kavi who knows everything kranta darshi who knows everything so sarvajna purusha is that parama purusha kim vishishtam cha purusham yati kavim sarvajnam purusham yati one attains the status of being one with that sarvajnya purusha if one thinks of that sarvajnya purusha at the time of death thereby yati here says puranam puranam what is puranam chirantanam purapi nava beyond time timeless purusha tatva anushasitaram who is the overlord सर्वस्य जगत प्रशासितारम याकेंड केस ऑल आर सेकेंड केस अणो सूक्ष्मादी अणीयांसम अणो अभी अणीयांसम या वन अटेन्स दी सटलेस्ट सटलर देन दी सटलेस्ट वन इज सटलर देन दी सटलेस्ट अणु इज स्मॉल बट देन स्मॉल इन देंस ऑफ सटल सूक्ष्मतरम अनुस्मरेत वन हु थिंक्स अनुचिंतयेत वन हू डज उपासन ऑन दैट कैंड ऑफ अ तत्व यह कश्चित हुएवर इट इज कर्ता ऑफ द सेंटेंस सर्वस्य कर्मफल जातस्य धातारम विधातारम विचित्रत्रया प्राणिभ्य विभक्तारम अचिन्त्य रूपम वन हू इज बियॉन्ड दिस थिंकिंग यू कैन नॉट थिंक अबाउट यू कैन नॉट ऑब्जेक्टिफाई दैट कैंड ऑफ अ पुरुष कंप्लीटली सगुण सी निर्गुण कैन बी अंडरस्टूड सगुण saguna the gunas are endless what all will you think about saguna is the, to understand saguna it's an endless journey how much ever you know there is more to know even in science you look at it how much ever you know there is more to know because it's tending to infinity this sagunatvam is like like that that's why this ananta kalyana guna if you want to understand all the kalyana guna sagunatvam right so you try to understand what kind of guna this guna then another guna then another guna all the vibhutis belong to ishwara how much will you try to understand when arjuna asks how in which all ways should i understand you so he explains he gives a sampling but then he says this is not all yadyat vibhuti mat sattvam whatever is there in manifest as vibhuti that is all me he says but then we saw last time in earlier part as we have seen it is not that only the good is bhagwan everything which is bad is also manifestation of bhagwan because there is no body else there is no other sad vastu except for ishwara brahmaatma so achintya roopam beyond your uh, imagination also uh, his exists the truth being stranger than fiction even if you can imagine any kind of fiction this is how bhagwan would be he is even beyond that the truth is even because it is tending to infinity it is infinity itself sagunatvam is also really infinity there if you take away purna from purna that purna remains what do you do with it how do you understand purnatvam except for understanding the tattva you cannot do anything more than that that is why nirgunatvam is easy but sagunatvam is not easy upasana is more difficult upasana is very difficult सो अचिंत्य रूपम नस्य रूपम नियतम विद्यमान केनचि चिंतयुम शक्य है केनचिदी चिंत न शक्य है नॉट पॉसिबल टू इमेजिन एंड डिफाइन वॉट द सगुण ब्रह्म ईश्वर ई शक्य है अचिंत्य रूप तम आदिवर्णम आदित्य इव सो आदिवर्णम हेज बीन सेट वर्ण इज दि कलर आदित्य देर फॉर सगुणत्व सम क्वालिटी इज बी मेन्शन देर इट इज ऑल सैंप्लिंग आदित्यवर्णम आदित्य इव नित्य चैतन्य प्रकाश वर्ण यम आदित्यवर्णम वॉट इज दैट प्रकाश रियली प्रकाश आदित्य प्रकाश वर्ण वॉट इज दैट प्रकाश इट इज आदित्य वर्णम वर्ण नॉट रियली आदित्य वर्ण वर्ण ओनली दैट लाइक दैट नॉट एक्साक्टली सो दैट प्रकाश विच इज एक्चुअली नित्य चैतन्य प्रकाश दैट स्फूर्ति दैट चिद्रूप ब्रह्म हू मैनिफेस्ट एज ईश्वर 
as aham aham in each and every jiva, each and every jiva sharira, that is this aditya varna. Tamasa parastad, beyond this tamas, ajnana lakshana, tamasa is ajnana lakshana, the darkness of ajnana. Mohandakara, that is the comparison, the delusion is the mohandakara, one is confused, deluded. Mohandakara param tam. Anuchintayam yati iti purveda sammandaha. Who is beyond that ajjana, to whom this ajjana does not affect at all, that atma paramatma is this kavi, purana, anushasitara, anoho, aniyan, then sarvasya dhataram, dhata, he is sarvasya dhata, he is supporter for everyone. Achintya rupa is Aditya Varna and Tamas of Parastat. He is beyond the Tamas. Even Maya Shakti is what he wields, but he is beyond that unmanifest Maya also. And thinking about him. All these are in second days. Kavim, Puranam, Anushasitaram, Anoho, Anoho, Aniyamsam, Yaha Anusmaret, Yaha Anusmaret, Yaha Yaha Anusmaret Anusmaret Sarvasya Dhataram Dhataram Achintya Rupam Aditya Runa Tamasa Parastat Yaha Anusmaret Yaha Anusmaret What about him? So, you can supply something and make the sentence complete here. Thus, Bhagavan Bhashyakara, see, Anuchintam yati iti purvena sambandha, tam paramam purusham yati. So, you can bring down the anuvritti of this paramam purusham, yaha kashchit paramam purusham, divyam paramam purusham yati. So, you can bring that and say, saha yati. Same thing, this Kavim Puranam, Anuchintayan, anu, Yaha Anusmare, Saha, Kavim Puranam, Anushasitaram, Anuhaniyamsam, Yati. So you can bring this whole thing here and say Yati. Because Yam Yam Bhavam, actually this should go here. Kincha, moreover, Prayanakale Manasachalena, Bhaktya yukto yoga valena chaiva, bhur madhye pranam avesh samyak, satam satam param purusham upaiti divyam. Difficult to read online, especially this loka. So, prayana kale manasa chalena, achalena, manasa chalena, achalena manasa. Prayana kale. Achalena manasa, by the mind which is not moving, which is still on the anatattva, bhaktya, through bhakti, bhaktya yuktaha, yuktaha san, yoga bale nacha, and through yoga bala, the yoga which one has practiced, abhyasa yoga, abhyasa, we have seen that abhyasa is holding on to Bhagavan alone without any other rutti breaking it, bhuho madhye, Broho Madhye Pranam Avishya Avishya Levanta bringing the prana in between the eyebrows. Ajna Chakra basically yogic process which is not explained clearly. How do you bring prana between the eyebrows? So this is all Upasana which is taught in the Sampradaya. Details are not given here. Those who have studied the, those, those who have, have yoga initiation, Kundalini initiation, they would know. Otherwise, this is not easy. This is, you can just uh, focus there. But how do you bring the prana between the eyebrows? When you bring the prana there, the kundalini follows. So, it is difficult. Uh, the meaning is easy to understand. How that happens, that is not explained here. How that, the practice is not, practice is seen, should be seen in yoga shastra, which are based on this. This is sankhya. 
सो तम तम पुरु परम पुरुषम उपैति दिव्यम सो दिव्यम वी हैव सीन अर्लियर दिव्यम पुरुषम उपैति एति हैज सो वी हैव सीन उपपूर्वक एति हैज सो एति अटेंस सह तम परमम दिव्यम पुरुषम उपैति सो व्हाट शुड वन डू एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ नॉट ओनली होल्ड ऑन टू अनुस्मरण अनुचिंतन अनुचिंत हैज बीन सेड सो अनुचिंत्य what should one do bring the prana between the eyebrows and then samya kavishya having held the prana there between the eyebrows then what should one do sahatam upayati that person madhe prana aveshya having brought that prana and held there between the eyebrows one actually launches from there so launches in sense this from the brahma randra one launches to the brahma loka or wherever whatever bhava has there so this bhava here is explained is not which ever bhava has to take another janma but then this is also another janma the sukshma sharira goes and merges with the dt there till the karmas are not exhausted or one gets jnana utpatti there in brahma loka so prayana kale achalena manasa अचल मनसा भक्त सन योग बल भ्रोह मध्ये प्राण सम्यक आवेश्य सह तम दिव्यम परमं पुरुषम सह तम दिव्यम परमं पुरुषम उपैति इति अन्वय further oh, i have not copied this further okay let's look at the bhashya uh, in the from the website itself see uh, prayana kale marana kale manasa chalana chalana varjitana bhaktya yukta bhajanam bhakti taya yukta yoga uh, so what is yoga bala योग बलाय सामिज संस्कार प्रचय जनित चित्त स्थर लक्षण योग बल वॉट इज दट योग बल स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ योग वॉट इज द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ योग सामिज इट इज बॉर्न ऑफ सामधि प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सामधि सो देर आर मेनी पीपल हू डोट टॉक अबउट सामधि इन वेदांत वेदांत विच वेदांत नो ओनली उपनिषद these people have not studied all upanishads also some upanishad some part of upanishad some mantra geeta also bhashya has not been studied or has not been understood unfortunately because samadhi the word has been used by bhagwan bhashyakara we cannot call ourselves as vedantins by ignoring the samadhi yoga yoga as concluding in dvaita is refuted by bhagwan bhashyakara in brahma sutra yoga itself cannot be thrown away the person who throws away yoga which is a practice anga for chitta shuddhi for nididhyasana also nididhyasana is also yoga what else is it it is dhyana dhyay chintane when a person is holding on to oneself as brahmatma tattva through manana then nididhyasana is what what it is without any anya pratyaya which was said here as without any other pratyaya here vilakshana pratyantaritah tulya pratyavritti lakshana tulya pratyaya there in nididhyasana is that tattvamasi mahavakya aham brahmasmi or the shabdartha from elsewhere which gives a similar idea that i am this brahma which is taught in shastras as jagatkarta so i am jagat karta through the bhagat tyag lakshana or jahadajal lakshana once you are holding on to that tattva without any other vritti intervening this vritti of mahavakya or mahavakyartha then what resolves in is in one brahmatma where there are no two that brahma and atma become one and that is the nirguna brahma once that nirguna brahma brahma roopa samadhi is obvious there it 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 is it may or may not take place but if it takes place then it will cause the mega dhara and then the then that takes away vasanas which gives you more dhridata more nishtha 
and thereby samadhi ja samskara prachaya there is there is uh, there is an abundance of samskara which is born from samadhi which counters the other samskaras vasanas which are ashuddha samskaras thereby thorough cleansing happens without any other effort on your part thereby samadhi ja samskara prachaya janita chitta sthairya lakshanam thereby one gets chitta sthairya because vasanas are countered by these samadhi ja samskara prachaya janita chitta then what will be janita it counters the bad vasanas which are obstacles for nishtha once they counter the vasanas which are obstacles for nishtha then obstacles won't be there if obstacles are not there then what is janita is chitta sthairya lakshanam yoga balam what remains is that strength of yoga which is characterized by sthairya in that of chitta in the din din the dheya vastu that dheya vastu happens to be you finally it happens to be you otherwise it is saguna upasana there also it is dheya vastu for yogis it can be for some siddhis also it can be some dheya vastu this dheya vastu is all the way only the dheya vastu changes how the mind functions how it resolves into the vritti resolution takes place chitta vritti nirodha is samadhi yoga chitta vritti nirodha which is samadhi all that functioning of the mind is common across all sorts of vishayas for dhyana whether it is nirguna brahma as vishaya whether it is mahavakya as vishaya which results in nirguna brahma whether it is saguna brahma upasana whether it is ishta devata whether it is for some siddhi prapti it is some other deity or some some quality some guna person wants all that whether it is prana whether it is kundalini whether it is chakra the object may vary the end result may vary but the functioning of the mind is same otherwise there is no use to yoga shastra there is no use to any shastra because we won't know how the mind reacts the mind may react differently but there is a general explanation that the shastra gives as to what happens to a mind when it works the way uh, or rather when it is when it is used as an instrument the way it is defined by the shastras way it is prescribed by the shastras if it is going in this way then what is that adrishta which will bring about chitta shuddhi which is what is that adrishta which will result in some kind of a siddhi which will result in some kind of a prapti or which will result in some kind of a resolution all these are definables because the mind works in a similar fashion generally it works in a similar fashion as to what exactly happens we may not be able to say for for the mind of a child may be different more chanchala than the mind of a Uh, of a well trained yogi of of an adult uh, there is a difference between the way a mind functions for a woman way it functions for a man so there may be gender variations there may be sh- sharira variations there may be prani variations but a commonality is that when mind holds on to one thing it becomes focused concentrated then it resolves this is a common factor thereby samadhi we need not worry about samadhi being present in vedanta shastra it is yogika samadhi only because there is no other samadhi defined in vedanta shastra we take the same definition which is in the yoga shastra the only thing is that we do not agree that it results in dvaita if you if if there is misunderstanding of dvaita as an end result and a person that person goes to samadhi then he will come out of samadhi with this dvaita prapancha only with advaita jnana it will become sthira and resolve into advaita tattva thereby a person may not come out of samadhi or even when he comes out there is no dvaita prapancha because dvaita samskaras are burnt away and further he says then there is yogic process of what exactly happens i just wanted to indicate that there is a lot of yoga which is described including kundalini hinted by bhagwan bhashyakara so we need not shy away from it there are people who talk about mysticism this is all mysticism vedanta is mysticism as well 
people who do know what is mysticism mysticism is something that is not understood vedanta which says that you are brahma when it is not understood it is also mysticism a person who goes and says i am ishwara people will throw stones at you those who are uh, they say this is blasphemy because they don't understand how you can be ishwara if you understand it then it is no longer mystic to you similarly how this samadhi works how siddhis come about how kundalini works it also has to be understood it is shastra pramana shastra is pramana even for that in upanishads also kundalini yoga all these are talked about we know only little we don't know even 10 upanishads let alone 108 or more there were thousands of upanishads which are lost in the sampradaya even if you pick 108 upanishads there are a lot of yoga and kundalini works there just because we do not know or our teachers do not know does not make it uh, so that there is no yoga in shastras except that there is no kundalini we may not understand and we leave it as mysticism but that compares even from yogi's perspective vedanta is is can be held at a same status that we he, uh, we hold yoga we need not have such compulsions we agree that yoga has its own process except that jnana moksha we don't give up we say yoga by itself cannot result in moksha therefore purvam hridaya pundari ke vashikritya how do you do that without understanding yoga vedanta does not teach how to do vashikarana of prana in hridaya pundari ka hridaya pundari ka itself we don't know that may be explained in bhashya elsewhere the the lotus shaped heart so thereby we'll say it is buddhi and all that but here you cannot say buddhi vashikarana in buddhi so purvam chittam vashikritya having controlled the mind and brought here in the hridaya pundarika there you cannot say having brought the mind in buddhi so it is a physical sthana you have to talk about nadi is there so thereby tataha urdhva gaminya nadya he is talking about nadi nadi is described in yoga shastras tantra shastras in kundalini so nadya bhumi jayakramena there is hardly anyone i know who explains this word in vedanta who will explain this word bhumi jayakramena this is a kundalini word so you look at vyakhya i'll just show you these are not not discussed but this is these are bhagwan bhashyakara's word bhagwan bhashyakara new tantra he knew yoga he had siddhis all that was there just because we do see we say uh, vedanta is not about siddhis we don't want siddhis who is giving you siddhi it is like saying you know nachiketa rejected all that i don't want that swarga i don't want who is giving you you have to earn it just by saying i don't want it is is meaningless there are many people who don't want anything because they don't have access to it if you have access to it and then you don't want it then it is meaningful nachiketa who was offered emperorship who was offered swarga who was offered dhana who was offered apsaras he had vairagya to say no because he was offered it was right there in front of him if we say i don't want all that nobody has offered us we have to qualify to get that and then reject it and we don't know whether we are capable enough to reject that when if we, if we are offered that we don't know unless we are tested so that is a test so bhumi jay krama is there we don't want bhumi this bhumi jay is winning over the earth principle adi so it through chakras chakra siddhi is there not that everyone has to get it but then there is a process there yogic yogic process upasana results in this kind of a process where therefore it is more difficult this attaining krama mukti is more difficult than videha mukti jivan mukti and then videha mukti here bhumi je kramena bhuoho madhye pranam avishya how we don't know yoga process sthapayitva prana how do you control prana how do you see controlling prana i can say i'll hold it on to uh, between i'll do kumbhaka i'll do rechaka all this is possible how do you bring that prana to eyebrows we don't even know that prana moves there barely anyone understands whether prana goes there we know prana goes from my nostrils it goes to my stomach and it comes up again and prana apana i understand 
where do i know how to get it to prana bhroho madhye so all this process has to be known in that particular shastra we can't reject it outright uh, but krama mukti is accepted by bhagwan bhashyakar as well so bhroho madhye prana maavishya sthapito samyak apramatta san not being negligent sah eva evam vidwan yogi kavim purana mithyadi rakshanam the that purusha he attains so this is the shloka here uh, anyway we will look at the next shloka in the next part ha huh? i have not made the document uh, ready as either i just wanted to show here in the vyakhya see bhumi jay krama and what are these nadya and all that here he talks about as ida pingale dakshinottare nadyo hrudayat nisrute niruddhya tasmadeva hrudayagrat urdhva gamana shilaya sushumnaya nadya hardha prana mahaniya kanthavalambita kanthavalambita tana si kanthavalambita tana sadrusham mamsa khandam prapya this is the process that the tikakara explains bhagwan anandagiri explains what is the yogika process for this kanthavalambita tana sadrusham mamsa khandam prapya this is that The, the little tongue thing which is, which is hanging there at the end of the throat the kantha at the kantha so the prana has to be brought there and tena advana bhor madhye tam avishya apramadavan apramadavan brahmarandrat here it this shloka just talks about at bhor madhye but no it has to go through sahasrara and break through the sahasrara therefore there is a sampradaya of breaking a coconut on the head of the sanyasi so that his brahmarandra breaks and the jiva goes from there whether or not he has practiced yoga there is a there is a culture that the prana should leave from there so brahmarandra vinishkramya kavim purana mityadi so the how is not explained but this is the process how is known to in each and every sampradaya through the guru you cannot just say the bro madhya i'll do something nothing is going to happen You, a person may get headache so this chakra uh, upasana and all these are very difficult to be done without very risky also even with a guru it is risky without the guru anyway it should not be done so he, and last he says bhumi jay kramena ityatra bhumyadinam panchanam bhutanam jayah so bhumi jay kramena is starting with the winning over the earth principle and then water principle fire principle all the pancha mahabhuta panchanam bhutanam jaya means vashikaranam one has control over these so there that is the siddhi they have control over all the uh, basic elements and there by the elementals also so anyway so i just wanted to indicate that so all these things are there so it is not that bhashyakara does not talk about it bhagwan bhashyakara also talks about this yogic process which he agrees is there so we have we should be open to it we need not know all that but we should be open to it we should not outright reject anything om narayana parvyakta dandam avyakta sambhavam andasyantasya me lokah saptad dipa ch me dini any questions except for bhumi jaya krama Uh, if samadhi is prerequisite should it not be yearned for also exclusively with sankalpa that one wants it not necessarily see one need not have sankalpa for everything one may or may not have but then it is a prerequisite for what it is a prerequisite for vasana kshaya and manonasha or it is a prerequisite for krama mukti not for jivan mukti not necessarily for jivan mukti rather see jivan mukti for chitta shuddhi samadhi see uh, to say that chitta shuddhi is a result of samadhi that the stage is a little different see for yogi yogi is the end result they look for is not chitta shuddhi samadhi is what samadhi chitta vritti nirodha they won't talk about chitta shuddhi they'll say that samadhi is the end goal a person who can remain in samadhi he is mukta for them it is mukti but for us that mukti that a person has that ananda swarupa atma is attained we agree 
but then janma does not go away a person will get janma again we say it is chitta shuddhi at what stage it is at the stage of after getting jnanotpatti so jnanotpatti the chitta shuddhi that leads to jnanotpatti is not uh, does not have samadhi wanting for jnanotpatti chitta shuddhi is needed but that chitta shuddhi is through karma yoga not through samadhi samadhi gives chitta shuddhi in the sense that it gives vasana shuddhi vasana kshaya and that vasana kshaya is at the stage of jnan after jnanotpatti when jnanotpatti has taken place advaita jnana has taken place one is practicing niridhyasana that time there are lot of obstacles which make the chitta ashuddha how they make the chitta ashuddha they do not uh, they they fructify into some kama based on the earlier sanskaras so the vasanas manifest as kama raga dvesha ityadi in the mind then when that manifest it makes a person an individual <coughs> the person who is saying that i am just give me a moment please <coughs> i'm sorry the person who is staying in this atma tattva as brahma that person is becoming individualized again where the purnatva is the focus he becomes individualized due to the uh, mind being shaded by the vasanas manifesting as kama raga dvesha ityadi and they segment him as an individual i am an individual i am a i am a man i am a woman all these ideas which are there which are tendencies gathered not only in this janma across janmas they start coloring the mind once that happens that faces that brings about an obstacle that does not allow the jnani to stay in nididhyasana one cannot remain with the tattva thereby the mind cannot resolve that point of time he starts samadhi he should practice samadhi and then when the samadhi comes about then it cleanses that vasana thereby the person should spend a lot of time in ekanta and practice samadhi train the mind and practice samadhi now there is a catch 22 there is a catch 22 as to uh, he cannot practice nishtha therefore uh, the obstacles have to be worked on and obstacles being there he can't practice nishtha and he is asked to practice samadhi to counter the vasanas which are bringing about obstacles there is a catch 22 so it is always one building over the other you have to do whatever is easy at that point of at that moment if nishtha is easy stay there if not then practice yogic process and resolve the mind thereby samadhi and that samadhi will bring about not chitta we don't call it chitta shuddhi really but it is vasana kshaya mano nasha these are the words used there nasha adarshane so that helps the mind to be seen for what it is it is not uh, me but it is something which helps me it is a tool and it is anatma it is not atma it is a manifestation of atma it is an appearance of atma but it is mithya so this is the process it is uh, it is discussed uh, quite elaborately in uh, viveka chudamani but uh, uh, it is running around in circles till obstacles are resolved so sankalpa may or may not be needed it is irrelevant sankalpa is irrelevant because sankalpa is for dharmic processes also you are doing some dharma karya this yoga is not something which is given as a vidhi by shastra that you have to do this this yoga shastra is different but it is not something which is given as a vidhi as uh, do a sankalpa and then uh, get this result it it gives drishta phala so uh, samadhi itself is drishta phala does that answer your question or uh, did you have something else so chitta shuddhi is what we say in, as a general term but it is uh, specifically after jnanotpatti and it is vasana kshaya 
Okay. Anyone else? Anything else? Okay. okay, namaste. I'll see you in the next part. Uh, yeah, karma yoga. Jnana, before jnana utpatti, karma yoga. Yes. Karma yoga all the way. Yes. In fact, those who uh, cannot take to sannyasa, they should do... Uh, they should follow uh, uh, karma yoga even after jnana utpatti. Continue to do that. Uh, special Vedic rites in the sense, yes, there are uh, because uh, it is not the same process as because the see uh, uh, there are various ways. In, in fact, uh, details I wouldn't know, but then uh, accidental death has has a different ritual to be done. There is more. Uh, Shanti to be done, and then uh, uh, even whether or not the body is in this, in the uh, body is intact, whether body is accessible, all these will matter on the uh, will have a have an implication on the processes to be followed. Sudden death, uh, I wouldn't say for sudden death. I said for accidental, yeah. For accidental death, yeah. For uh, sudden death, there may not be anything different. But uh, I just mentioned that in sudden death, the mind is not, uh, you, a person does not know that he is dying, so the mind is not prepared for death. And uh, uh, in the natural process, the mind has time enough to regret or to gather what it likes, what it doesn't like. In sudden death, there is uh, the difficulty. In accidental death, it is said that it is unplanned. Unplanned in the sense, the, being accidental, it is... Uh, uh, the jiva is in a state of shock. It is true in sudden death also, but the jiva is said to be in a state of shock, wherein uh, he does not get to choose. There, the, the karma is not ripe for him to choose another body, and then uh, uh, the all the processes are for that preta vasta and for the gati. Uh, so it is uh, the karma kanda is too complex. Uh, we don't understand anything, but the shastra say that. In accidental death, the preta sharira has it's difficult for it to be released and get gati. Thereby, some shastra processes are a little more indulged. I mean, are more involved. That's what I hear. Uh, so uh, I think uh, some Narayana Bali and all may be uh, there for uh, for the gati. Uh, I am not an authority on that by the way, so I am just telling you whatever little I know, I may not be the most accurate, uh, I, I won't, I am definitely not most accurate, I won't know details, uh, but from what I have seen, what I have uh, heard from Panditas of Karmakanda, that's what I am telling you. Okay, Namaste.